Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Mark Procopio with Free State Justice in Maryland. Um, when I was asked to speak today about our recent effort to ban conversion therapy in our state, uh, I thought about what the most salient lesson from our, our campaign was that I could share. And I think I'm going to echo what Daniel and, and Stephanie have said about relationships, 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 uh, and a little bit of serendipity. Um, so, and it's kind of important to note that the biggest gaps in policy uh, in our state are laws and policies protecting and affirming LGBTQ youth. Um, and we also knew that we were at a time where our organization had not been active in our state capital for three sessions, um, so we didn't have those established relationships. So we knew that we needed a coalition. Um, and so we worked with a grassroots women's group uh, that actually approached us about uh, a conversion therapy ban. Um, and so we, we needed to grow a broad coalition of, of um, partners with subject matter expertise, with uh, perspectives from the faith community, from parents and families, um, connecting with potential survivors of the practice, um, as well as uh, as well as medical and mental, and mental health providers. Uh, so we started to form our coalition and get the, the word out about our, our issue and begin educating the public. Um, we found natural partners in some of our national works that we work with. Uh, and we worked with our legislative champions um, our LGBT caucus in our state capital. Uh, so we built our relationships and set out our roles with um, our coalition at WISE, this grassroots women's group, really taking the lead on recruiting faith leaders and key flag parents and uh, medical and mental health providers, building our coalition. Free State took the lead uh, on building our, our champions in the legislature, uh, getting our bills to wonderful sponsors um, that were going to go to bat for us, and uh, we relied on uh, HRC to help mobilize the base in, in Maryland and um, take the lead on a lot of our communications work. So by the time we came around for our hearings, we had an army of advocates ready to speak on our issues. Um, and we actually were able to get all of our, or to get our state mental and medical health, uh, medical and mental health professional associations to submit testimony in support of our bill. Uh, and we prepared for our contentious floor fights, um, which were much more contentious than we uh, had even anticipated. We were able to break through in our, in our state Senate, even getting two of our Republican legislators to switch, um, switch their vote in the final, final hours before. Um, and that's when it moved to our, our House of Delegates chamber. Our sponsor was, was prepped, our allies had talking points. Um, we kind of knew what the opposition that we were going to get, and we, we did our, our whip count and thought that we had we're confident we had the 70 votes that we needed in the House. Um, and so the floor fight began, and that's when the youngest member of the legislature, uh, Republican delegate, 27 years old, uh, named Megan Siminer of Anne Arundel County, got up and um, implored her colleagues to vote for, our, for the conversion therapy ban. Um, she shared that she shared the story of a young girl who had struggled for years um, with her sexuality, growing up in a conservative evangelical family, um, and struggling for years with self-loathing and pain. And she said, she told her colleagues that if there was one child that this bill would prevent that, that type of pain that she felt um, as a bisexual woman, then the, the bill was worth it. Uh, and in her kind of courageous act um, uh, of honesty and vulnerability, we had well over 90 votes. We had 95 yes votes, and over 30% of the Republicans 
so as to abstain from the vote completely. Um, thank you.